Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video talking about the introduction to the finite element method in which we are talking about chapter 5 which is the development of frame equations and on this video 3D equations. Now this is going to be the last video on that chapter and we are following the chapters of the book A First Course in the Finite Element Method by Daryl and Logan the 6th edition. So with that being said so let's dive into it so sit back relax and enjoy the show. Okay, so for my video today, I have an example that I want to solve in which we are going to try find the displacement of the node number one and the local forces at the edges of each and every element of those things. Now, um, you see he's asking you in this example, which is taken from the book, to find the rotations and all the kind of movements that node number one is going to undergo. He's not asking if node number two, three, and four because all those nodes are fixed and as we know, they will not undergo any movement. He also gives you the typical stuff like the elastic modulus, the shear modulus, uh, the J, which is basically the polar moment of inertia. It's basically the inertia that resists uh, twist or torsion. Then IY and IZ, and of course the area. He also gives you the length of all three bars. Now here I was surprised when I saw the solution in the book. I was positively surprised because finally the dear Dr. Daryl L. Logan is actually using the CE's standard method of dealing with examples. This came really like a, this was happy news and welcome news for me. In which basically the book uh, explains that he's gonna find the transformation matrix first and then find a local stiffness matrix and then, uh, you know, multiply T transpose KT to find the global matrix. This was welcome news for me and I really liked that. Now what I did here, is this is the general question you can see the global x-axis going to the right those are the global directions the global y-axis going up awkwardly and the global z is going into or out of the page basically to you dear viewer and i tried putting my local x y and z for each and every element so the blue here means the local x-axis of element number one the green here means the local y-axis of element number one and the red here means the local z-axis of element number one. I did this to help you find the unit vectors of each of those local uh, directions. Meaning, for example, for bar number one, you can see that its local is aligned with the global. So you can see that the unit vector of the local is one in direction of i, which is the direction vector of the x, zero in j and zero in k, because this blue vector is actually parallel to the global x vector. Talking about the green vector, you can see it going straight up. There is nothing in X for it and there is nothing in Z for it. So you can see 0, 1, 0 for the lo local Y. Finally, the local Z is going again towards you. Notice that the local X and Y and Z are built and constructed based on the theory and the principles explained before. Also notice that this TKT has been explained before as part of an extensive finite element method playlist or series which I will link the playlist to on the top right. You can see of course here the lambda which is basically the construction of the unit vectors like you just take the three unit vectors and put them in matrix form. The book does it differently. The book defines M and N and L and D and whatever. I like to do it like this. Lambda is unit vector of local x, unit vector of local y, unit vector of local z. Now of course you can see four lambdas here. The reason why you see four lambdas is because you have one lambda of them dealing with the movements of node number one, the transformation of those. You have another lambda dealing with the rotation transformation of node number one. Another lambda dealing with the movement or displacement transformation for node number two. And finally, the last lambda dealing with the rotation transformation of node number two. So you need four lambdas in the transformation matrix. Okay, so with that being said, you can find the local X, you can find the local stiffness matrix. Now I explained the construction of the stiffness matrix in the previous video that I will be linking above. This is a one-to-one -one, um, implementation. There is nothing to be added here. And of course, T transpose KT gives the global stiffness matrix. This is the global stiffness matrix of element number one. Point number two is fixed, so I can immediately know that uh, the relevant part of this stiffness matrix is basically this. Those are irrelevant because they get cancelled due to the fact that two is fixed. So only this is the relevant part, but that's something for later. I'm only foreshadowing here. For element number two, it's the same thing, just that you understand that is our structure. This is element number one. 
element number two and element number three. So to element number two, we're going to follow the same idea. Uh, it connects three to one. You can see from three to one. So the local X axis is the blue one. Now the local X axis comes towards you out of the page, which means the local X axis is actually in the direction of the global Z because this is the global X. That's the global Y and that's the global Z towards you perpendicular to the page. So you can see this X aligning well with the global Z. So its unit vector is 0, 0, 001K because it aligns with the global Z. The local Y aligns with the local for the global Y. So you can see it being 0, 1, 0. And the local Z aligns with the negative X, a negative 1, 0, 0. In case you're wondering how do I know the directions, it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, the, let me remind you, the bar goes from 3 to 1, so the local x-axis is from the start to the beginning. The local y is up, the, the local z is found by the right-hand rule, basically cross-producting x and y. So if you cross-product with your right-hand rule x with y, you get z going in this direction. The same idea follows, I find t, which means I find the local stiffness matrix and multiply to get the global, something that has been done immediately. Once again, spoiler, 3 is fixed. So immediately I can understand that this entire region here is useless to me as it's going to be striked through when I do my um, assembly. What remains is element number one or node number one with node number one. Finally, I have my standing column here. Once again, my x-axis connects the start with the end. And now I have a special case because x is in a special case so of course here i have explained this before y becomes this direction and z becomes this direction and you can easily find the unit vectors here now the transformation matrix is x local y local z local i mean the lambda and this is part of the transformation matrix basically the transformation matrix is this chunk repeated four times i have my local stiffness matrix i find my global from it and now the part of assembly happens so to assemble the stiffness matrix, I tried to make it graphically better. This is element number one. This is element number two. And that's element number three. And all of them get slashed because element number one connects node two, which gets slashed, as you can see here, with node one, which survives. Node two gets slashed left and right because it's fixed. And fixed means that no movement in X, no movement in Y, no movement in Z, no rotation about X, no rotation about Y, and no rotation about Z happens. Similarly, for element number two, it connects node three with one. Three gets slashed because three was fixed. One survives. And finally, element number three connected four with one. Four gets slashed because fixed, when what survives is element number one. Of course, adding those three together gives you this, which is the global service matrix. And to find them, you need to find the displacements, you need the forces. Okay, so the forces here are on one. There is a negative 50 in the Z because it goes down. And there is a moment which I cannot discern. I don't know exactly where this moment is going. This moment is not clear for me from the drawing. I don't know if this moment is around, for example, the Y, Z axis, for example, or if it's around the X axis, or if it's around the Y axis. I don't know. So luckily for me, he's telling me it's MX. So I know that this is around the X axis. Cool. So I have my forces and that's what you see here. You see the 50 in the Z and I messed up because I'm used to having Z being the vertical. Uh, so yeah, it's negative 50 in Y and in my M with X. The solution of this gives you, of course, this displacements. Now, how do you find the local forces? You need the local displacements. So for example, let's say I want to find the local forces on element number one. Now to find the local forces, I need to multiply the local stiffness matrix by the local displacements. Now, I don't have the local displacements of bar number one. Bar number one connects node number two with node number one, meaning the global displacements of that thing is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And those six zeros are for the displacements at two, because I know for a fact that two is fixed, which means its six displacements are zero, or six, six uh, degrees of freedom are zero. Because there is no movement in X, there is no movement in Y, there is no movement in Z, there is no rotation in X, there is no rotation in Y, there is no rotation in Z. But that's only half of the displacement vector. The other half is this. This basically gets copied here. Because it connects 2 to 1, those are the deflections and rotations for node number 2. And of course here comes the rotations and deflections for node number 1. Now this vector is not D dash the local. No, this is D, the global. 
To find the local, I need to multiply it by t. So what ends up happening is that the local force F dash is gonna equal K local multiplied by transformation matrix D. That's the reason why I like to find the local surface matrix. It helps me, enables me to calculate more efficiently. Of course, that has been done here and is readily calculated here. A challenge for you, a challenge I have for you, dear viewer, which will really be satisfying if it works out for you, is to try draw the normal force diagram, the shear force in Y diagram, the shear force in Z diagram, the torsion and moment diagram, the rotation MY diagram, and the rotation MZ diagram for all those elements. So it costs a lot of time, but this is really satisfying if you get that. I hope that with this example you have covered almost everything related to bar elements in the finite element method. What I'm saying is, basically you are ready to tackle any bar structure that is thrown at you and this should be really a good achievement for you. Now you understand how softwares work and how the finite element method works. It's really cool and satisfying once you get the grip out of it. Now the next videos are going to be talking about area elements, which will basically rank up the difficulty of the series. So it's a good point now to pause for a moment, check all the previous uh, videos, and make sure you got all the necessary concepts right before you embark on the next video having plane elements because it's a magnet order of magnitude more complicated with that being said and before i finish i want to give a huge three-dimensional frame sized shout out to our dear channel members whose names are going to be shown on the screen in the contributor level and the helper level i want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and really helps me and enables me to provide the videos i want to provide i hope that you enjoyed the video and that was beneficial for you of course if you have enjoyed the video then please like share comment and subscribe as a sacrifice for the algorithm of youtube especially subscribing because it helps of course increase the reach of my channel as per usual this is the civil engineering essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video bye bye